Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today, once again, we are sponsored by Audible. As usual, you can start listening with a free 30-day Audible trial and get full access to thousands and thousands of all-you-can-listen audiobooks, original entertainment and podcasts included in the Plus catalogue. Just visit audible.com slash jingles or text jingles to 500 500. This time around, I am extremely excited, and I'm not exaggerating, to be able to heartily recommend, with your first free monthly credit, an audiobook that I have been breathlessly waiting for for the best part of the last two years, since its late great author personally confided in me that he was in the process of writing it. To all the US men and women who have served in uniform for a better Afghanistan since September 11th, 2001, your valor matters. Finally available, a year after he was taken from us far too early, it's Who Can Hold the Sea? The story of the US Navy in the Cold War, 1945 to 1960, by the great James D. Hornfisher, author of, amongst others, Last Stand of the Tin Can Sailors, The Fleet at Flood Tide, and Neptune's Inferno. Jim swore me to secrecy that he was writing this two years ago, the last time I spoke to him before he died, and I finally get to listen to it. And of course, you can too. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Just go to audible.com slash jingles and use code jingles or text jingles to 500 500. Meanwhile, this in the German Tier 8 premium battleship, the Tirpit, the lonely queen of the north, is Clyde the Monkey, who you may know from streaming World of Warships on Twitch. The funny thing about Clyde is that he never really understood the significance of his name. Now, those of you who are old enough to get the reference, I'm sitting here praying at the start of the battle for him to make a right turn. And he did. <laughs> right turn, Clyde. The funny thing about this is that he took the name Clyde the Monkey as a reference to Shaun of the Dead when Nick Frost is doing his Clyde the Monkey impression to cheer up uh, Simon Pegg. What Clyde didn't understand, because he's basically an embryo, is that that itself was a reference to the 1978 Clint Eastwood movie Every Which Way But Loose, where he plays a bare-knuckle fighter who drives around bars in the middle of Hickville, USA, with his pet orangutan, Clyde. And because the indicators don't work on his truck, Whenever he wants to turn right, he just says, right turn, Clyde, and Clyde sticks his arm out the window. So, and this is very important, by the way, if you're going to go and watch Clyde stream World of Warships on Twitch, and there's a link in the video description to his Twitch channel, he loves it when people say, right turn, Clyde, to him. <laughs> it's funny every time you do it, and it's even funnier the more often you do it. So, top tip. Clyde, you're welcome. Oh, he's going to hate me for this. <laughs> but that's why it's funny. So, yeah, Tirpitz. Uh, what tier battle is this? I wasn't paying attention at the beginning. Let me just go back and check. Oh, wait, no, don't need to. There's a Bayern over there. So if there are tier sixes, this clearly must be a tier eight battle. So Clyde is top tier. So what do you need to know about the Tirpitz? It's a pretty good ship. Um, it's armed with... Eight 15 inch guns, 381 millimeter, I believe. So, for all practical intents and purposes, what that means is that his 15 inch armor piercing shells can overmatch, and that means not have to perform a ricochet check and just basically automatically penetrate up to 26 millimeters of armor plating. He can't do that when he's hitting 27 millimeters of plating or more, which means he will have to take care and worry about ricochets when he's shooting at any of the tier 8 battleships. And he would have had to worry about that when he was shooting at any of the Tier 8 cruisers, because some Tier 8 and 9 cruisers also have 27mm of bow and stern plating. But there are no Tier 8 cruisers in this battle. All of the cruisers in this battle are Tier 7. And there are only two cruisers per team in this battle. Each team has five battleships, four destroyers and a carrier. Which means that all of the battleships in this game, with the exception of the Fuso on Clyde's team, can overmatch the bow and stern plating of those two cruisers from any angle. Of course, the cruisers can still bounce armor-piercing shells on their belts if sufficiently angled, but if they give broadside like that, they're gonna get paddled. 
So, first blood to Clyde and the Tirpitz, and it was a good kill, because that was the enemy Fiji. And the Fiji is a very powerful ship. It's easily good enough to hold its own in even a tier 9 battle. But it is a bit of a glass cannon. And you don't want to be given broadside in a light cruiser like that when there are this many battleships in play. Oh, and destroyer spotted. The matchmaking here is enough a nightmare for any of the cruisers. But it's not great for the battleships either. I mean, each team has a carrier and four destroyers. And the Tirpitz is unique amongst tier 8 German battleships in that it doesn't actually have hydro. However, the Gnevni there is not a torpedo threat. We talked about jingles. We just saw his torpedo. He's basically at point blank range. Well, yeah, but that's more dangerous for the Gnevni than anybody he was launching torpedoes at. And the, uh, the terrible, I'm, I'm, I haven't even got a clue how to begin pronouncing that in French, uh, has killed him. And the reason why that was more dangerous for the Gnevni than anybody who was launching torpedoes at was because the Gnevni's torpedoes only have a four kilometer range. So I don't know who he was expecting to hit with the torpedoes from six kilometers away. Clyde could have hit him with the torpedoes. In fact, he did launch torpedoes because the Turpins has torpedoes with a six kilometer range. We did briefly see a whole bunch of torpedoes coming around the left side of the island over there. And they were almost, ooh, another nice hit this time against the North Carolina. But those torpedoes were almost certainly launched by the enemy Yudachi, and that's a Japanese destroyer. And that definitely poses a significant torpedo threat in the way that the Genevni absolutely doesn't. Let's see if we can follow up with more damage on the North Carolina. A battleship that is fast, is armed with 16 inch guns, but not, it's not badly armored, but it's not as well armored as something like the Tirpitz. See, the Turbitz has pretty strong armor all round, and has that tradition... Ooh, wow. Yeah, it's not a good day to be a cruiser, is it? The friendly Fiji just got himself deleted. But yes, German battleships, and some of the German cruisers, have what's known as a turtleback armor scheme. It's difficult to explain without showing you exactly what that looks like, but if you imagine the citadel of the Turbitz, so all of the important stuff, the engine spaces, the magazines. Imagine that inside the ship there's a sort of armoured tent. It's probably the best way to describe it. With a sloping roof that's very thickly armoured, protecting the citadel. Now if you're being shot at from far away and the shells are basically coming in from above, that extra bit of angled armour around the citadel isn't really going to provide you with that much protection. Because if shots are coming in from above at like a 45 degree angle and they hit that 30 or 45 degree angle citadel roof, that effectively cancels the angling out. However, oh hang on a second, there's another tier 7 cruiser. <laughs> this should hurt. Uh, it didn't hurt as much as it should have. The Helena is of course within secondary gun battery range. Oh and that's the other thing about the Turk, the secondaries are fantastic. They are very very good and it will surprise absolutely nobody to see from the skill indicator down here that Clyde has of course gone with a secondary build. Most high tier German battleship captains do because it's reasonably effective and it's a lot of fun and he has <laughs> hit the Helena Citadel. <laughs> the Helena's wondering what the hell just hit me. <laughs> Can the friendly Bayern maybe finish him off? No, no, he's not shooting at him. Oh well, never mind. I'll bet you Clyde can finish him off though. Because that Helena should be... Well, he's... He's got a destroyer going after him. Yeah, he's... He's never going to survive this. But here's the thing with the turtle back... Wait, what? He got some... But the shells haven't arrived on... Oh, he got two of them! <laughs> he nailed the Z23 with his secondaries without even looking while the shots were in the air that finished off the Helena. But here's the thing, sorry, that was great by the way, double strike, kill number three, but here's the thing about that turtle back armor, it is less effective at long range because the shells are coming in from an angle that basically negates the angled citadel turtle back armor roof, but the closer you get, those shells are coming in from a flatter angle, which means that the angle of the citadel armor is more effective. So while it's not impossible to citadel turpits, 
you're probably only really going to do it from that kind of range or more. Didn't get the kill on the key, disappointing. I mean, these 15 inch guns, they're not terrible. You know, it's not a Gnizer now, but they're not the most accurate guns in the world either. But the point about turtleback armor is that it's basically more effective the closer you are to the ship shooting at you because shots from close range come in at a flat angle where the turtleback angling of the citadel roof actually makes a difference. Very difficult to citadel turpits at close range. Meanwhile, Clyde, even though he doesn't have hydro, doesn't need hydro to know that the Mayhan over there will have launched torpedoes. And here's the curious thing about the Mayhan, he's getting hammered by Clyde's secondaries. And those were Fubuki torpedoes that he had to turn to avoid, but the turn put him on the course that he should have been sailing anyway, getting him into cover behind that island, because the Fubuki that launched those torpedoes has been sunk by the key that Clyde failed to kill with his previous shots. But instead of running into cover, which he would have successfully been able to do, he instead turns the ship around, charges back towards the battleship that's slaughtering him with his secondaries, and gets slaughtered by the battleship's secondaries. So there's kill number four for Clyde. Shots out against the key, and the key has managed to recover some health after ducking in behind the island there and finishing off the Fubuki. And he was reasonably well angled there, so none of Clyde's 15-inch armor-piercing shells from that salvo did any kind of appreciable damage. Get some torpedoes away, just in case the key's going to come out from behind the island. My god, I think he is. Oh, he's not coming towards the torpedoes, though, so the torpedoes aren't going to hit him, but these 15-inch armor-piercing shells are. Oh, and he just barely survives. Rear turret out. Oh, and he just barely survives again. Go, go, gadget secondaries. <laughs> oh, it looks like the key's turning in to bring all of its guns to bear on Clyde, and these are 16 inch armor piercing shells. This could hurt, and that did hurt. But Clyde gets to fire again. The key is surely not going to survive this kind of concentrated battering, and it doesn't. And there's the Kraken unleashed, and that's not all, because I don't know if you saw the uh, message pop up. Secondary battery loading time improved. This means that Clyde is, of course, running the German legendary commander Gunter Leutchens, and he just scored 100 secondary battery hits, which triggered the relevant talent on the legendary commander that further reduces the reload of the Tirpitz's as secondaries. Key torpedoes, because yes, the key is, like the Tirpitz, one of the few battleships in the game that does have torpedoes, but they slid harmlessly past to the right. Shots out on the Bayern. Oh, both of the Bayerns are up there. It's not the North Carolina is about to die, probably to the carrier, but the two Bayerns could actually be a problem because they're the only real significant threat left on the enemy team. Now, you might be thinking, well, what are you talking about? They're only tier six battleships. Well, yes, that's true. But they are tier six battleships on with the same 15 inch caliber guns that Clyde has. And there's two of them. Now, Clyde does have an advantage because he's tier eight and they're tier six. And yes, they are launching depth charge attacks at him, which I always find hilarious, and if you're paying attention to chat, apparently so does Clyde. But Clyde's advantage clearly doesn't lie in the calibre of his guns. They have the same 15-inch calibre guns as he does, and there's two of them. But it lies in the armour plating that he enjoys as a Tier 8 battleship, which they, as Tier 6 battleships, do not. They have 26mm of bow plating, which he can overmatch with his 15-inch armor-piercing shells. Although they do have a 30mm strip extending along the lower part of the bow, but that does still make them vulnerable. It makes it difficult for them to bow tank him, although they really should still be going nose in, if for no other reason than to just make them a more narrow and smaller target. Their 15-inch guns cannot do the same to him because he has 32mm of bow plating. Also, they really don't want to be getting to within six kilometers of him because he has torpedoes. The Bayerns do have turtleback armor as well, by the way, but it's nowhere near as good as the Tirpitz. Their turtleback armor is only 30 millimeters of additional protection, which means he can't overmatch it. But his turtleback is 120 millimeters, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah, it's going to be a problem for them. This doesn't mean these ships are immune to damage, by the way. You can still penetrate the armor do substantial AP chunk damage like that, but it just means it's next to impossible to citadel them from short range. It is, however, very, very easy to torpedo them from short range. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> 
the second Bayern could kill him here. He exhausted the heal to ensure that he survived the encounter with the first one. But, you know, just because he can't be citadeled doesn't mean he can't take huge chunks of armor-piercing pen damage. Kind of like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Seven kills. <laughs> the carrier's going to try to... Well, yeah, rocket attack planes. They set a fire. It was actually the fire set by his secondaries that finished off the second buy-in, rather than any direct damage. But, I mean, you know, he was doing a lot of direct damage too. And the secondaries were doing a lot of damage as well. I'm going to be curious to see how much damage his secondaries actually did at the end of this battle. Assuming he sent me his comprehensive post-battle results. The carrier might finish him. He's on fire. His damage control's on cooldown. He does have a heal left, which is going to be ready to go in six seconds. Oh, the carrier's coming back with the dive bombers. He's determined to get at least one kill. There he is. He's got some shots. But the accuracy of these guns isn't great. Still, he might hit him. Here come the dive bombers. Right turn, Clyde. <laughs> Honestly, Clyde just loves it when people say that to him in Twitch chat. And yeah, no, no, he's good. He's got the heal off. And honestly, his team are going to cap before the carrier gets to try again with the tall healer bombers. He does get some shots out. It's only four. And these are not the most accurate guns in the world, particularly at this kind of range. But it looks like he might get one. Yeah, a little bit of extra damage. Nearly 4,000. Then the team caps. The game ends. And that's a seven kill victory for Clyde the Monkey in the Tirpitz. Unsurprisingly, with seven kills and nearly a quarter of a million damage, he was first on the team with an astonishing 3,000 base experience. Equally unsurprisingly, for a secondary spec German battleship, his secondaries were responsible for 37,000 of that damage, with an additional nearly 11,000 inflicted by the fires that the secondaries set. And on at least one occasion, and I'm thinking back to the double strike between the Helena and the Z-23 here, the secondary's being responsible for claiming a kill on a ship that he probably wasn't even actually aware was there at the time, <laughs> so... <laughs> but hey, it's better to be lucky than good. Of course, it's even better if you can be lucky and good. Although the Turbids does have something of a checkered reputation in World of Warships. It's known either as the Torpids, because it's a battleship with torpedoes, or the Derpids, because of just how dismally badly people tend to play in this thing. It's not the Tirpitz's fault, but I'm pretty sure it was one of the first premium tier 8 battleships in the game, and I'm pretty sure it was the first premium German battleship in the game. So naturally, a large number of people went out and bought it, and unfortunately a large number of people are just not very good at playing World of Warships. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. In the hands of somebody who does actually know what they're doing, this ship can be a bit of a monster. So, Clyde the Monkey, seven kills and 3,000 base experience in the Tirpitz. Remember folks, right turn Clyde. <laughs>